Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here. I'm here today with the Roland FP90X. And I have gotten intimately familiar with this piano. Basically, when I get a keyboard, I like to take at least a week to play it every day. At least an hour a day, sometimes more. It amounts to the better the key action and the sound, the more I play it. And if you're a uh, professional pianist, you'll understand this. When the piano practically plays itself. You're playing it, of course, but you're playing it without subconsciously fighting the keys to get what you want. So, in talking about this, let me talk about a couple of other pianos also in the FP line. Uh, one of them was the FP90, which is the predecessor to the FP90X. The FP90 had supernatural piano modeling. And this one has the pure acoustic piano modeling engine, which is a more advanced modeling engine. And in order to accommodate this more advanced engine, they needed to upgrade the processor to a bigger or a faster processor. So they're using the BNC chip for this. So you have definitely an improved piano sound from its predecessor, the FP90. And you have this My Stage, which is modeling parameters for piano modeling. And we'll get to all that as the video progresses. And the other piano I wanted to talk about also in the FP series is the FP60X. And in fact, the design of all three, the FP90, the FP90X, and the FP60X, is very similar, even though they're different on the inside. The casing and the features and that kind of thing is very similar. In fact, the user manual for the FP90X is the same as the user manual for the FP60X. And I have to say the user manual for this is actually really good. They have illustrations and examples that are actually worthwhile. So the difference between this and the FP60X, you have four speakers here instead of two. You've got 60 watts of power, and you're getting a more refined sound from the speakers in this. Cleaner, clearer, high end in this than from the FP60X. The newest piano modeling, as I just mentioned, the pure acoustic piano. And other than piano, with the FP60X and the FP90, all other sounds are the same. And the FP90X also has a song volume slider. Didn't have that before. All right, so let's talk about the FP90X now. It comes in two colors, black and white. I like black. Some people like white. Either one is good, but I think black is better. <laughs> it's only because that's my personal choice. If you're going to be doing wedding gigs, that kind of thing, white might be your game. Now, what it comes with, it comes with the Roland DP10. And this is a half damper pedal. So that already is a good deal here. It also has this thing here that slides out. It's a rubber mat where your heel rests here and your toe presses the, uh, the pedal here. So by virtue of the fact your heel is here, it supposedly keeps this from sliding all over the place. It works pretty good, but still, I like my technique where instead of pressing it with your toe like this, you turn it sideways and press it like this, it's not gonna slide. Also, it comes with this really cool, clear acrylic or plastic, whatever they're using here, music rest. You can have it on here. You can't even tell it's on here because it is see-through. And that's really nice because if you're gonna have things like uh, you can put a smartphone on here and run it with a couple of apps that Roland has developed and the audience will still see you playing the piano as opposed to 
other manufacturers where they give you a music rest that's something like this and it blocks everything out. Not cool. This is cool. Optional, they've got a three pedal unit which can be used with their stand or you can get a separate functional pedal with all three. And when it comes to using that three pedal option, if you opt for that, it's not just the standard three pedal function which you would find on any piano, the soft and the sostenuto in addition to the damper you can actually configure it through the parameters here to make it do other functions. And a furniture style stand in white or black is also an option. All right, now let's go through the physical properties of this. This is 52 pounds. It's not a lightweight, but it's not the heaviest either. And when you consider that this has a 60 watt amplifier and four speakers built into it, 52 pounds is actually not bad. That 60 watt amplifier and those four speakers, you can take this with you without having to bring a PA to small gigs, being a, a coffee house or a small lounge or a intimate party in a living room or whatever this is loud it's actually going to take care of you if you're going to use this for anything else bigger gigs bring an amp and speakers with you but this will actually take care of stuff and also if you're in a high energy rock band like i've been for a while doing classic rock where you can barely hear yourself play even when you bring in your own monitor and uh, speakers you know for the stage so you can hear what you're doing as opposed to the rest of the band this will actually work as a stage monitor for your uh, performance so that you can hear what you're doing physical dimensions this is 52.81 inches by 15.38 inches by 5.38 inches high. Now, the reason this is so heavy, 52 pounds, let me go into it, and this is what makes it worth what it is. The PHA 50 key action, which is a wood core. You got wood key sticks with plastic surrounding it. It is a wood plastic hybrid. But as I mentioned in the beginning, these key sticks, they approach the length of a upright piano. And to have something like that in this is so good. And the moment you sit down and play this, especially if you're a professional pianist or even a hobbyist, you will notice the difference right away between this and the rest of the pianos that are out there. It has escapement built in and an ivory and ebony feel to it. It'll absorb sweat, no problem. The other reason it's heavy is because it has a 60 watt amplifier and four speakers in there. Now the speakers, let's call them woofers and tweeters, two woofers and two tweeters. The woofers are 25 watts each for a total of 50 watts. The tweeters are five watts each for a total of 10 watts. So 50 plus 10 is 60. The woofers are actually oval. They're 4.75 by 3.19 inches. The tweeters are one inch round. Now, even though the casing here is plastic, I believe the inside casing is actually metal. And I mean, you can tell that the fallboard right here covering is metal. I believe it's surrounded by a metal cage because when you press on anything that's plastic, there's no flex at all. So it has to be metal behind that. Now, as I mentioned before, this is Roland's best modeling piano software that's built into here, firmware. It's the Pure Acoustic Piano, and the first eight pianos on this are using that. The Concert Piano, the Stage Grand, the Concert Ballad, Concert Mellow, 
Concert Bright, Concert Brilliant, Stage Mellow, and Stage Bright. There's 20 pianos. The rest of these are using sampled, but we're going to go through that and give you an idea of what that's like. But when it comes to all of the other sampled sounds, it's 256 note polyphony, which is very respectable. That is basically what you're going to find on your upper end piano. And like I said, there's 20 pianos here. There's also 18 electric pianos. There is 18 organs. There is 27 strings or pads. Uh, and as far as synth and other sounds, there's 279 different ones. And that includes eight drum sets and one special effects set. You also have the general MIDI 2 sound set that's also built into here. And as part of the overview, let's get into this uh, ambience button is basically a reverb button. They're calling it ambience. It's kind of a nicer, more elegant term, but it is reverb. And they have 11 types of reverb in here. And that includes studio, lounge, concert hall, wooden hall, stone hall, cathedral, and more. And when you get into the My Stage, which I just mentioned a little while ago, there's 12 different types. Also has Bluetooth capability, not just audio, where you can take your smartphone or streaming device and play back things through the built-in 60-watt speaker system here. It also has MIDI over Bluetooth, which is really cool. So that opens this up to a ton of apps out there that you can run on your smartphone or on your tablet. Roland has two specific apps that will work with this, and that's the... Uh, Piano Everyday app and the Piano Designer app. Those I will cover in a separate video, but they both run on Android and iOS devices. All right, so let's get into it. Let's start with the front panel because this is very impressive. It They have made this a minimal design, yet it packs a very thorough array of features built into this that if you control with this minimal design that has won this all sorts of excellence awards um, and that's why they kept the design on the FP90X the same pretty much as the FP90 and the FP60X I mean it, it won awards let's keep it that way it works so going from left to right We've got the power button, obviously that's self-explanatory. We have the volume here, and we have something here, the next three sliders, which you don't typically find on many digital pianos at all, and that's the equalizer. So you got low, mid, and high. Many stage pianos don't even have an equalizer, and if they do, you're going to have to go through menus to get to it. And it's really awkward when you can just grab three different sliders here and control the EQ. And as you move these, there'll be a little click in the middle to tell you when you're right at the midpoint. So let me demonstrate here how invaluable this is. I love the bass end on this, but let's say I want a little more. So I'm going to increase the bass end. Uh, let's bring it back down and I'm going to bring it to that click where it was. And it's a very subtle little click. Now, the mid-range. More pronounced in the mid-range. Let's bring that back down. And 
的哈耶呢？And you can do any combination of the three sliders. So, if you find you're on stage and you are kind of interfering with the bass guitar, you can lower this. And I found that many times, where the bass guitar and the lower end of the piano, they're kind of competing for the same audio space, and you can take care of that with this control right here. And if you want to make it stand out even more and cut through a mix, that's where you increase the high and the mid. Okay, the next button is ambience, which I mentioned earlier is the same thing as reverb. It's just more of an elegant term to describe it. So when you press ambience, you'll see that this outer ring lights up. And that's another one of the beauty of this digital piano. These buttons here, they're all surrounded by this round LED light. So when you're in a dark venue, this really helps. And it really looks good too when you're anywhere, even here in this brightly lit studio, everything stands out. You know exactly what is on and what's off. So, pressing the ambience, the screen turns to ambience, and you have a bunch of different kinds of ambience. Right now, this is a concert hall. Let me just show you. If I use the left and right arrows, I can go to the next type of ambience type, a wooden hall, a stone hall, a cathedral. So let me go back to a concert hall and then use the plus and minus buttons to adjust how much. So right now this is at one. We'll increase it to two. You hear a little bit more of that reverb. We'll increase it to three and to four and five and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and 10. So you'll wanna choose the one that you want the most. I think I'm more comfortable at four. Okay, and again, you go to Wooden Hall and we're gonna keep it at four. Listen to the difference. You still have that ambience, that reverb, but it's a different feel. It's a different type altogether. This is going to reproduce the ambience from a Wooden Hall. Then there's a Stone Hall, completely different sound. So if you had a hall that was made out of stone, that's what it would sound like. This is all modeled. And modeling means you, there's no samples here. Everything is created from mathematical algorithms to reproduce exactly the sound of a piano. From the moment you hit that key to what that hammer sounds like, to what the pedals sound like, to what the soundboard sounds like, to everything, there's a lot of mathematics going on. That's why they needed the faster chip to accommodate the more advanced and complex algorithms of the pure acoustic modeling engine. So this will all work with the first eight pianos here because those are the uh, modeled pianos. And here's a cathedral. Now we're only at four. But you got a cathedral, so naturally it's going to sound more. And if we go to the 10 on a cathedral, right, so you want to go to something a little less. All right, 
So I like mine. Um, I mean, we have lounge and studio and all kinds of other stuff, but I like mine at the concert hall. Setting of four. That's good for me. The next thing, and you don't find this on very many digital pianos at all, this is the lower and upper volumes for when you have a layer or a split. So if I go into a split right now, and you can see right here, I've got a concert piano on one and an acoustic bass on the other. So I can bring up the bass here and bring down the piano here. So we, this is a split. So if I had pads on this one, I might want to increase the volume. But if I press this again, now I've got dual mode, which means a layer. So I've got a piano and pads all at the same time. And I can adjust how loud I want each part. So if I want more pad or strings, If I want less and a little bit more subtle. Okay, so you get the idea. And one of the things I like, let me try this. Uh, let me go back to, let's say, a bass. Oh, that's cool. Let me go to a bass here, and I want to do a split. And of course, and maybe the bottom was a little bit too loud, but I can adjust that with the, uh, the part, the lower part here. So let's get back out of this and go back to normal, back to piano. Also transpose, very handy to have as part of the main front panel. There's too many keyboards out there where you have to go menu diving to get to transpose. It's one of the most popular things there is. So if you are playing piano and you've got a singer, you're playing something in C, but she knows it in E flat, and you don't know it in E flat. So basically, you're gonna hit transpose and hit E flat. Now everything you play in C is going to come out in E flat. And when you're done, you just hit it again, and you're back. The next five buttons are category buttons. You've got piano, electric piano, organ, strings slash pad, and synth slash other. So when you're in the piano category, the first thing that comes up is the concert piano.
and it sounds so good. And of course, you can use, as I mentioned, the EQ and the parts and all that kind of stuff so that you can tailor this to exactly what you want. If you are layering this with something else, you'll use the part volume. If not, the EQ does some tremendous sound shaping for you. Now, let's go through what some of these, especially the first eight, sound like. You just heard the concert piano. Let's go over to the stage grand. Concert Ballad. And the Concert Mellow. Concert Bright. Concert Brilliant. Stage Mellow. And stage bright. Now there are, like I said, 20 pianos. The first eight are modeled. The next are basically sampled. Here's an upright piano. Let's go to the mellow upright. Bright upright. Rock piano. Ragtime. Bright forte. Anyway, what I'm getting at is you can hear the difference between the first eight pianos, which are very detailed, very refined, and you get to the rest that are sampled, they almost sound kind of blah in comparison. And sampled pianos, there are really good sampled pianos out there. But when you compare them with the uh, pure acoustic piano modeling engine, it just it just doesn't sound the same. I really love that modeling engine. And there's a lot you can do with that modeling engine. And I do like the, uh, the first, the concert piano sound the best. All right, let me skip to my stage because this deals with the modeled pianos when you go into the my stage thing here right now we've got this set up for piano recital i go to the next one um an at hall stage Go to the Lakeside Studio. I kind of like that. If I were going to do a gig, I might just pick the Concert Grand and go into the My Stage number three setting, Lakeside Studio. I like that. But there's others. 
Here's an impressionist. I like that too. <laughs> There's a lot to like here. Here's a heritage hall. Lounge concert. Also really nice. Church concert. Nice, but not my style. Jazz club. bit brighter. A medieval salon. And a recording studio. Traditional Opera House. East Coast Hall. Sounds a little muffled to me. And that's it. So basically, you pick your one of your eight model pianos and you can basically apply one of these special effects to it. And very, very, very cool. And if you're not sure what it's going to sound like and you don't want to play, you can go ahead and press this and get a demo of it. Here is the demo of the uh, piano recital as applied to the concert grand. And if you go to the next one, the at hall stage, you can get a demo of that. So basically you can get a demo of almost anything here. In fact, let's get out of this my stage stuff. Right here, the split dual and transpose you'll see that they're connected together with the word demo underneath, meaning if you press both of them, you're gonna get a demo. And you're gonna press piano. Here's a demo of the concert piano. It's gonna go through its thing for all of the built-in sounds with the exception of general MIDI and that kind of stuff. Here's the piano, the bright forte. Now, I've already put together a video that demos all of this stuff, so you might want to check that out. I'll put the link in the description. There's a concert mail. If you want to go to the electric piano section, you get the same kind of uh, demo of what things sound like. Organ. All right, so let's get out of that. So anyway, that was the piano. We'll go to the electric pianos. This is a 1976 suitcase. Okay. We can go to the next electric piano, which is a Tyne electric piano light. Modified dyno. And you can hear where they have the key on noise and that kind of thing. A little bit different. Uh, VREP1. A 
a Wurlitzer. A pure whirly. A phase electric piano mix. Notice when I change to the next piano, I don't lose what I had here before. It's a seamless transition. Anyway, I can spend all day doing this. Let's go to the next one, which is organ. We've got some mellow bars here. Lower organ. A light organ. A pipe organ. A Nissan flute eight foot. A church organ. Jorgen 2. An accordion. An ACD musette. A harmonium. Not exactly a, a good match. Probably wasn't a good example, but that's what it sounds like.
strings and pads. Here's some chamber strings. synth and other here's a super soft <laughs> this is my favorite. Roland puts this in all their instruments. Their jazz scat. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. I love that. Anyway, there's so much here, including the entire General Midi's Who sound set, which is like 256 voices all together. Anyway, I'm not going to go through all these, but just to give you an idea. Then there's registrations. You can save up to 45 different registrations here and recall them. And basically what a re registration is, you, you pick the sounds that you want, you make all the changes that you want to the keyboard. So basically a registration is a snapshot of everything you did to create the sounds that you want and you save that. So basically when you're at a gig, you might save four or five registrations that you basically absolutely have to have. My stage we covered, the uh, LCD panel and the two buttons to the left and right of it basically choose the category or whatever and then the fine tuning in, in here to make individual choices within that category the exit exits you from whatever function you're at all right so now let's go into the function setting and the function setting is an interesting one there are 40 different function pages here you can see we're on page one of 40 and this is bluetooth and you can turn bluetooth on from here or you can actually hold the function button down and then you can go ahead and pair your Bluetooth device with it. The next one is the key touch and this is what I love the most. On most keyboards that you get, if they have a key touch setting, and they probably do, most keyboards do, they usually have at a minimum light, normal, and hard. So when you press it, if you like to have a light touch you set it to light and you barely touch the keys and it sounds the way you want really good if you have arthritis or you know your fingers are just not that strong 
hard, if you like to play it really hard, and normal, basically in between the two. And this is what I love the most about this. Even the Nord Piano 5, the latest and greatest for $3,600, doesn't have the kind of key touch this has. It has light, medium, and hard, like I just said. But this, you can fine tune it because you can adjust it from 1 to 100. I like my key touch at 55. Now, if I go closer to 100, see how soft it is? I really have to. And if I go down to the lowest setting, I'm barely touching it and it sounds. So I like to go to 55. And I found for most of the piano settings, this is perfect for me. You might have to change it a little bit for each different piano setting to compensate for what that sounds like. But for me, 55 seems to work for just about everything. And I just love it. Instead of three settings, which would probably convert to 33, 66, and 99 on here, I've got 55. <laughs> I can't do that on another piano. There are some other pianos that really have that kind of fine tuning, like the Dexabel S9 has that, but this is perfect. I love it. Next is master tuning. We've got this set up for A440, typical USA standard. You can change that. Uh, temperament, we have it set to equal, but there's all kinds of different temperaments, just major, just minor, Pythagorean, Kernberger, Kernberger 2, Kernberger 3, uh, there's a lot, but I like to keep it right where it's at for the United States. Temperament key, we can change that too. Uh, piano designer, now this is an example of where I would go into the plus minus to go into the um, the actual piano designer menu. Now there is an app that does the exact same thing as this does. It's called Piano Designer, but you have that built into here. So if I enter my pressing function, now I've got all kinds of things I can change. Starting with the lid. Now you have a grand piano you've got a lid you can have it closed you can have it fully open and different places in between this the lid position is at four right now five six which is fully open and if i go to fully closed listen to the difference let's go to two This is all basically, you know, piano modeling at this point right here. So let me go to the next one. We got key off noise. Some people want to hear the key off noise. Hammer noise. We can hear that too. We can set that however we like. Duplex scale. Full scale string resonance, which is really cool. You can actually control how much resonance you got from the strings when you play adjacent notes or cousins or harmonics of those notes. Key off resonance, cabinet resonance, that's another interesting one. You can actually adjust the resonance of the cabinet. Cool. Soundboard type, that's another interesting one. Listen to this. So let's change that to, say, three. So you can hear the difference here. You can actually fine-tune the piano you want 
<laughs> it's so amazing. Whatever you want, you can come up with a piano that nobody's ever heard before. Damper noise. That's the noise when I step on the piano. Pedal, right? Soft pedal. Single note tuning. You can actually tune a single note on here. How cool is that? Single note volume, same kind of thing. If you're playing something and your finger is kind of weak when it gets to a certain note, you can increase the volume on that. Or for whatever other reason that you need to do that to increase or decrease the volume. Single note character. There is so much you can do here. And then you can reset everything. Okay, so let's exit that. All right, that was Piano Designer. And that was on page 6 of 40. So let's see what else is there. Page 7 of 40, we got the hammer response that we can set. We can set twin piano on and off so that you can have a a teacher on one end uh, and a student at the other, and they have equal keyboards making the exact same sounds, the exact same octaves and keys on both ends. Equalizer, we can get to that too. If we press function here, we can actually set right here for these equalizer sliders where we want the frequency of those equalizers to be. So the EQ low frequency here is set for 160 hertz. We can change that in the same for mid and high. Let's exit that. Song transpose. So when you're playing back a, a MIDI file or whatever, it can transpose it on the spot. Input and Bluetooth volume. So if you have something plugged in to the back where you've got a, a smartphone or another streaming device and you've plugged it in directly or you're streaming with Bluetooth, you can increase or decrease the volume of that overall here. USB audio input volume, same thing. SMF, which is MIDI um, play mode, and you can select that here. Recording mode. Actually, the recording mode, count in measure, delete song, rename song. This is for songs, copy song, format media, damper pedal part, right and left. You can change that, as I, I mentioned before. Center pedal, sustenuto, and you can change that to other things like play, stop, layer, all that kind of stuff, expression, master expression, bend up, bend down. So you have really a, a pitch controller on your pedal here if you want it. Modulation, you have a mod wheel right there on your pedal if you want it. Mic doubling switch. Anyway, let's get back to, uh, let's keep it as sustenuto. And we can change other pedals to do other things as well. Left pedal, left pedal part, right and left. Um, registration pedal shift. <laughs> so you can go from one registration to another. Uh, set export. We're just going to go through these briefly just so that you can see what's here. Registration bank. Most significant and least significant bytes. Registration program change. Uh, local control on and off. Basically, this is on right now. If you turn it off, this is when you would be using it as a MIDI controller to your computer so that you're running some virtual software, uh, a virtual piano or whatever. You don't want to hear anything on the piano here. You're just going to use this as a controller. That's where you set local control to off. MIDI transmit channel, you can set this from 1 to 16. Display contrast, you can set that here. Panel brightness, 
that's these things here. It's bright. We can set it to dim. We can barely see it, but you're in a dark venue. That's where that would come in handy. Otherwise, keep it at bright. Speaker auto. Now, there is a switch in the back to turn the speaker on and off, but if you have it off, you can actually turn it on here. So now you're hearing the speakers. And then an automatic shut off. I've got it set for 240 minutes, which is four hours. If there's no activity here for four hours, it will turn itself off. But you can adjust that down to as little as 10 minutes. 30 minutes, 240. Okay, I like mine at 240. This is where you back up your memory. And this is where you can reset everything to the factory defaults. And this is where you can check your version. I'm at version 1.03 right now. Okay, so that's it for the function control. Now, self-explanatory, you got metronome, you got tempo, slow, fast. Uh, you can actually do it yourself as well, set the tempo. Song mode, you have a USB stick or whatever. Uh, you can set it in song mode. And then the recorder. We'll go through that real quick. I'm going to press record. Right now, It's you can give it a count in so that you can count in down from four, three, two, one, play. But right now, I've got it set where it's waiting for me to start playing. stop that. Now, suppose you've just played a piece you're trying to learn with your left hand. You're going to play it back now, and you're going to add your right hand to play along with it, or vice versa. Or you just did what I did, and you're coming up with an idea. So I recorded something. I'm going to play it back and play along with it. Very cool. So for me, this acts as a scratch pad. Now the song volume, that's for playing back MIDI stuff. But one day I was trying to, I, I recorded stuff on my DAW and I tried to play that back here and it wouldn't play. And that's because they call this song volume, they really should call it MIDI volume too, because it wasn't until I increased that fader up where I could hear the MIDI file that I basically recorded so I could hear it play back. So it's not just song, it's also MIDI. You have another keyboard hooked up to this and you're trying to play this through that other keyboard, make sure that song volume is up. Then there's microphone. You got the gain control on the back, but you also have a mic volume here. Now, here's the thing. Most professional mics, and here's the most popular microphone in the world. This is a Shure SM57. Most popular microphone in the world, but like most professional microphones, it uses a three pin XLR connection. And the mic input on the back of this is a quarter inch connection. So you got a mismatch. So what you want to do is go to your favorite music retailer, whether it's a brick and mortar store or order it online. And you, you're gonna need a cable anyway. So you might as well get a cable that has an XLR connection on one end so that it can go into your mic. And the other end is a quarter inch. And this can be a quarter inch TS or TRS. Basically, if it has one black band here, it's TS. If it has two black bands, it's TRS. TS stands for tip and sleeve. TRS stands for tip, ring, and sleeve. 
It doesn't matter which way you go if you're just connecting this a short distance and you're singing while you're playing. But if you're going a longer distance, you're playing this and you got a singer 10 or 20 feet away, you might want to go with a tip ring sleeve connection because that has a ground in it and that's going to protect against interference and uh, picking up radio waves and electromagnetic hum and that kind of thing. So for longer, longer cable runs, you want to go with this. But basically, let's plug this in in the back. Test. <laughs> Test one, two. So basically, here, I got a mic volume here. I'm going to increase that. All right. So when I hit the mic button, now I go into a mic effects here. So I see here compression, doubling, echo, all that kind of stuff. So you go to the right here, like it says, and this is the compression type. I've got normal, hard, and soft. So this is soft compression, this is normal, and this is hard compression. All right, now I go to the next one, doubling type. I got one voice, two voices. So my voice is doubled now. Let's go to the next one. Doubling width. I got normal, I got deep, and I got light. So this is my width, light, normal, and deep. And you would combine this with whatever you chose on the previous menu. Doubling level. <laughs> so you can really take control here. Uh, this is a doubling level of zero, and this is a doubling level of 10. Echo type, one through 10, I believe. Test one, no, through seven. Echo level, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So there's a lot of stuff that I can do with this. So if I'm a, a pianist and also a singer, I don't need an extra amp. I don't need anything extra, just a microphone stand and plug this into here. And I can do it whatever I want with this. Okay, lastly but not least, let's take a look at the back panel. All right, so you have your standard five pin din legacy midi jacks in and out which is really cool because you don't find those anymore except on the higher end pianos then you've got your three piano pedal type connectors and they're labeled rcl for right center and left or and that way you use them for whatever you want or you have your standard three pedal setup, which is damper, sostenuto, and soft. So if you were to buy the optional Roland three pedal setup, you can use it for either way that you want. Above that, there's a USB-B connection, and that would be a cable hooked up from there to your computer so you can communicate with your DAW. Next to that is a usb a connection so you can put in something like a, uh, a flash memory drive or whatever and that would be cool to record to and speaking of recording when you do record your playing setup you can record it as a MIDI SMF file or as an audio file which is really cool you got the choice of doing that below that the speaker on and off as I mentioned but it doesn't matter if it's off that's cool because you can turn it on right here from the keyboard controls here. And then you've got the microphone input. Like I said, it was a quarter inch, but you want to get yourself a cable that goes from XLR to quarter inch so that you can use a professional mic. Now, you won't be able to use a condenser mic because this does not supply phantom power, but you can use a dynamic mic, which is what you'd want to use anyway when you're singing in a performance because that's going to block out a lot of the background noise, whereas a condenser mic is going to pick up everything. You drop a pin, it's going to pick that up. You don't want that in a live performance. That's for studio. And then you've got the gain control for the mic. 
Then there's the uh, eighth inch stereo input where you can take basically a headphone jack type cable and run it from your smartphone or streaming device or MP3 player directly into here so you can play it back. You can play along with it. And then there's the standard left and right quarter inch output jacks. So if you're with a band and you're going to want to hook up into their PA or to the house PA, you're going to want to hook up a cable from the left or mono so that it summarizes the stereo and feeds it into the house PA or your band's PA. Uh, if you're doing a more intimate performance, then you're going to want to hook up both left and right and hook that up into a stereo amplifier or two separate stereo or uh, two separate speakers so you can have it as a stereo setup. And that is pretty much it for the review overview on the Roland FP90X. This is so good and you know me. I review a lot of keyboards. I've been doing this since 2011. And occasionally I find a keyboard that is so good, I actually want to buy it rather than return the loaner back to the manufacturer. This is one I am definitely going to buy. It is not going to go on, um, on gigs, although it would be perfect to go for perfect solo piano gigs. But I really love the sound of this so much. I'm going to be using this for studio recording. It is so good. The sound on it is perfect for studio recording. So that's what I'm going to be using this for mainly. And this, I mean, I cannot endorse this enough. I really love this. So I hope this has helped you out. Piano Man Chuck, peace out. Thanks for watching.